Hi everyone, this is Alice, and I'm going to share some teaching tips for Unit 3 in the Code.org CS Principles curriculum. I'm going to address the following question. How would you recommend a teacher differentiate instruction in this unit if her students had a wide range of backgrounds with programming? Currently, I teach a small class of students. However, the backgrounds of the students are quite varying. So when we went into Unit 3, this became very apparent um, as students started to kind of go off in different directions. So about a third of my students it, are um, pick up programming pretty quickly. And um, other than checking in every once in a while and uh, sharing what they've been doing, um, they don't need much guidance from me. So there's another third of the group, which um, for the most part are independent, but I can anticipate the points where they will need some instruction and some scaffolding. And then I have about a third of my students who um, get stuck and um, are not able to complete the assignments independently and do require much more support in order to um, achieve the tasks. So I wanted to share this slide, which is which says that FAIR isn't everyone getting the same thing. FAIR is everyone getting what they need in order to be successful. And since the mission of computer science principles is to broaden participation in computing, I think that uh, this slide really um, is a motto for instruction in the principles course. So the tips that I'm going to share are going unplugged before programming on Code Studio, using a grid handout to help plan the program, and integrating mathematics and computer science. So the first tip, going unplugged. I um, found that I had to help students write out steps of the program by hand and using a manipulative to represent the turtle, especially when it changed direction, was really helpful. And it um, definitely seemed to help them grasp some of the concepts when we were talking um, about the steps out loud. So let's go ahead and do a demo. Lesson six was when I first saw students really uh, needing some more support from me. So um, they understood top-down design and they actually did a great job naming the functions that they knew they wanted to create to, in order, uh, to create this design. And so the functions they knew they wanted uh, were right in order to turn right, turn around, to do turn around 180 degrees, and then they wanted to uh, create a function to draw this cross, and they knew they needed four crosses. They had a very difficult time with writing this function, and so what I did was uh, we just kind of wrote out the steps, but on a piece of paper, on the handout itself, and so here's an eraser which represents a turtle. And I marked it with an L for left and an R for right, so you know which what is the turtle's left and right um, according, even if it's turned around and not facing north. So they knew that they wanted to move forward three times. Then they knew they needed to turn around. And then they wanted to move forward just one time. At this point, I asked them what they uh, would like, what was the next step, and they said they could either turn right or left. So in this, in this case, we'll turn left, and we know the left is towards the L of the eraser. Then we're going to move forward one step. Turn around. Then 
then they need to move forward two steps. Turn around. Move forward one step. Now at this point, this was probably the trickiest point in the um, algorithm, is they wanted to turn back towards the south, but if they took a look at their uh, manipulative, in this case the eraser, they could see that south was to the right. At that point, they knew they wanted to move forward two times. And then we had a discussion about how we wanted to end the um, turtle facing the same direction as when it started. So we would have to turn around. Now, once they drew this on paper, it was um, quite easy for them to translate it into a program. Okay, so these were the steps for going unplugged. The next tip is to use a grid handout. And so I created a handout which had uh, an image of the mobile app screen and I overlaid an, uh, a grid on top of it. And so um, when the students looked at the handout, we explicitly discussed the difference between coordinates on the screen in computer science and the coordinates on the Cart Cartesian plane in math. And then um, we, I put sheet protectors on the grid so that the students could write and erase the drawings. Okay, so here's a handout and you can see all I did was copy the image, but then I found a grid and I manipulated it so that, as you can see at the bottom, each tick mark on the grid represents 20 pixels. So the dimensions represented by the square is 20 by 20. So I just want, I just emphasize how the square is not a pixel, but it is 20 by 20, or in other words, 400 pixels. So one of the first exercises asks uh, the student to write a program so that the turtle moves, so it touches the edge of the screen. And I ask them to consider the nose to be at the center of the screen. So after they do the exercise, we talk about what the dimensions of the um, screen are. And so we can see it's 320 pixels wide and 450 pixels high. Therefore, if you want to know the coordinates of the turtle, it would be half and half, which is 160 comma 225. So the student would have to move up 225 pixels. So now we take a look at <clears throat> the mobile screen on Code Studio. And if you hover over the screen, you can see the coordinates of where the crosshairs are. So similar to math, as you move to the right, the x values increase. But very different from math, as you move down vertically, the y values actually increase instead of decreasing as they do on the coordinate plane as they learn in math and science. And so this is something they just need to get used to. So now let's go ahead and go to bubble three. So this exercise asks them to draw a triangle, which is 100 pixels long. So it looks like you can start where the turtle is and move north. And so we're going to go ahead and take a look at this on the handout. So let me erase this here. So this may be a bit confusing to some students because as we move north, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, here's one side of my triangle. 
So now it looks like what I need to do is move in the southeast direction and then move back to where I started. However, they may have they may have to think about how many degrees does a turtle have to rotate in order to get to the second position. And so if you take a look at um, the manipulative here, representing the turtle, we can see that the turtle actually has to turn more than 90 degrees. And so I'm gonna extend this side here. And they may remember from math class that this angle is 60 degrees. And therefore, this angle is actually the angle that the turtle has to rotate, and they can see that this needs to be 120 degrees. And so in math, this is called the exterior angle and the interior angle, if you want to remind them that this actually was something that they may have been exposed to in geometry class. But I think drawing this out in this way is can help those students who can't see this rotation um, easily the first time they try the puzzle. All right, the third tip is to integrate math and computer science and just remind them what they already know from math class and related to the new material they're learning in computer science principles. Okay, let's go back to Code Studio and go to Bubble 7. So in this exercise, they are asked to draw a squiggly line and one of the new functions is arc left and arc right. So this, these functions were a little bit confounding for even some of the stronger students. And so let's take a look at the um, description of the parameters. So if you arc right, it moves the turtle forward and to the right in a smooth circular arc. So what I did with the students is I reminded them that an arc is just a part of a circle. So I drew a picture of a circle. Okay. And then I asked them if they remembered how many degrees was in a circle. 360. And so um, let's examine this arc, right? We have here the angle and here the radius. So suppose we wanted to draw arc right 90 degrees, 25 pixels. Let's think about what this would do. So here's a turtle. Okay. And arc right would mean go toward the right but 90 degrees. Well, let's go ahead and draw a circle from that point. Okay, so if we draw a circle, the radius would be 25. But we don't want 360 degrees, we actually only want 90 degrees. And so we don't want this major arc, we actually just want this minor one. We can check if this, if this is correct. Turn arc right, 90, 25, and run, and there we go. So if you take a look at the puzzle, it looks like you want these, these squiggles are actually made out of semicircles. And so you ask the students, well, if an entire circle is 360 degrees, then what would be a semicircle? And they would see that a semicircle would just be instead of 90 or 360, it would have to be 180 degrees. And this was actually very helpful to um, students to see that arc right was just part of a circle that they are very familiar with. Well, I hope this helps, and um, just remember that uh, we're 
part of a curriculum which is really uh, cr which was created to um, expose students from underrepresented groups in computing especially and therefore differentiated instruction is uh, something that is at the heart of um, what computer science principles is about. All right, thanks a lot.